We're now going to look at the binomial distribution. So the notation for this does look quite complicated, uh, as does the equation of finding out the probability of um, a random variable that is binomially distributed. However, the working out really isn't that tough. So in the first example, we're given that a random variable x has the binomial distribution where n equals 12 and p equals 1, 6. So I'm just going to write down, so that first number in the binomial bracket here, that is equal to n, and then the second number, that's our probability. So n is called, sorry, not probability, that's our parameter. n is called our index, and p is our parameter. So just making a note of those key words. Now, all this means is that um, when we have a random variable that is binomial distributed, that means that we've either got a fixed number, we've got a fixed number of trials, tw which is 12 here. Um, there are two possible outcomes, so success and failure. There's a fixed probability of success, which is the p-value, our perimeter, and the trials are independent of each other. So this could be, for example, this random variable, we could have that this is the event of rolling the dice 12 times and getting a 1 on the dice. So we either get the 1 or we don't. The probability of getting a 1 is 1 over 6, and we've got 12 trials. Just as, as an example, it might, that not, might not be what the actual random variable is. For part A, we're asked to find the probability that x is equal to 2. So we're going to use this um, equation for finding out the probability. This is called our probability mass function. So this is going to tell us how to find a probability of a random variable with a binomial distribution. So the probability that x equals 2, here we know that n is equal to 12, r is equal to 2, because we're finding the probability that x is equal to 2, our p, our perimeter, is a half, and we're raising that to the power of r, which is 2, 1 minus p, Oh, sorry, it's not a half, it's a sixth. One minus p is five sixths. And then n minus r, we're going to do 12 subtract 2. So for that bracket here, we're doing 12 choose 2. So that's a value of 66. We're multiplying that by a sixth all squared which is 1 over 36, and then we're multiplying it by 5 sixths to the power of 12 subtract 2 is 10. I'm going to keep that in my calculator. I'm just going to write that as 5 over 6 to the power of 10. I'm going to keep that answer in my calculator to remain accuracy. I'm multiplying it by 1 over 36, sorry, and 66. So my answer is 0.296 to 3 significant figures. For part B, we're finding the probability that x is equal to 9. So we're going to do, we've now got r is equal to 9. So we've got 12, choose 9 multiplied by the parameter, which is a 6 to the power of 9, multiplied by 1 minus the parameter, 5 6 to the power of 12, subtract 9. So again, in my calculator, that first bracket here, that's the notation for 12, choose 9. So that's 220. A 6 to the power of 9, I have a feeling I'll just have to save that into my calculator. Um, I'm going to write that as a fraction, actually. I've got 1 over 1007796 zero zero 
and multiplying that by 5 over 6 to the power of 12, subtract 9, which is 3. So multiplying that by 125 over 216. Now if I then write that in my calculator, 77696 multiplied by 220, just note that I've kept that uh, middle number as a fraction to remain accuracy and we've got 1.263 uh, times 10 to the power of negative 5. I'm going to write that as an ordinary number so not writing it in standard form and I get 0 0.0000126 to 3 significant figures. So the probability that x is equal to 9 is very low, very unlikely to happen. Part C, the probability that x is less than or equal to 1, that is equal to, so if it's less than or equal to 1, we've either got that x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 1. Now the reason for this is that the binomial distribution can take any value from 0 up to n inclusive. So we can find the probability that x equals 0 up to the probability that x equals 12. Um, so there are two uh, possible outcomes for x is less than or equal to 1 then. We've either got x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 1. So now we're going to first of all calculate probability that x is equal to 0. So we've got uh, 12 choose 0 multiplied by 1 over 6 to the power of 0 multiplied by 5 over 6 to the power of 12 subtract 0 which is just going to be 12. And then we're going to add our probability that x equals 1. We've got 12, choose 1, 1 6 to the power of 1, 5 over 6 to the power of 12, subtract 1. Now, if you look in your uh, calculator, 12 choose 0, that is equal to 1. We also know that anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So here we've just got 5 over 6 to the power of 12. And if we write that in our calculators, that's going to come up as a decimal that goes on for a while. So we're just going to write it as 5 over 6 to the power of 12. 12, oops, 12 choose 1 is equal to 12. So we're adding 12 multiplied by 1 over 6 to the power of 1 is 1 over 6. Multiplied by... 5 over 6 to the power of 11. Now I'm just going to write all of this in my calculator. So 5 over 6 to the power of 12 plus 12 multiplied by 1 over 6 multiplied by 5 over 6 to the power of 11. And my answer is 0.381 to 3 significant figures.